The views expressed are not necessarily those of KSCJ and Powell Broadcasting Company. This program is not intended to replace the advice of doctors or other clinical providers. Consult with your practitioner to ensure the proper course of action for you. Welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well on AM 1360 FM 94.9 KSCJ. This program is dedicated to your mental health wellness and brought to you by Family Services, a United Way partner agency. Here's your host, Art Silva. Good morning, Siouxland, and welcome to When Things Aren't Going Well. This show is all about your mental wellness and how you can help yourself navigate the daily highway of life. We hope to educate and motivate you to help improve your mental wellness environment. I'm Art Silva, and our show is brought to you by Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, a United Way partner agency serving the Siouxland community since 1894. Let me introduce my co-host, Brenda Geisinger, Chief Operating Officer of Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Good morning, Brenda. How are you living? Good morning. How are you? I think I'm okay. It's Monday, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got we got a good show today. We have two of our favorite people joining us. So would you want to uh, do the introductions and, uh, and our topic? I would love to. So today we have with us Jennifer Jackson from Heartland Counseling and Amy Black from Catholic Charities. They've been with us before, and it's always been a delight. Um, they keep us up to date and kind of what's going on, and we always have a good conversation. So welcome back. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Love to have you here, and it's good to see you again. And thanks for sharing, because whenever you come to the show, you always bring good stuff. So uh, today we want to talk about um, the Mental Health Roundtable, what it is, what is it planned to do, and how are you involved in it? So, Jennifer? Yeah, so the Mental Health Roundtable came out of the Siouxland Community Needs Assessment that the Siouxland District Health Department does. There's seven buckets, and mental health is one of them. And so Amy and I co-chair the Mental Health Roundtable. We meet in person and via Zoom every other month. And we also share a ton of information in between those meetings through email. So if you would be interested in being on that email list, you can always reach me at Heartland or Amy at Catholic Charities to be added to that list. Currently, we have um, over 100 people. Great. Yeah. That's excellent. That's yes. good. Amy, uh, do you want to talk about... Um the round table because you two are the reason I want to get involved in it because uh, <laughs> you're, you're great leaders you share a bunch of information all for the community good so I'm looking forward to this so Amy you, what do you think on the round table right I think one of the great things that we've really found is the collaboration that happens and it's not only the mental health providers here in our community as as Jennifer referenced but we also the colleges have been participating in that both the hospitals are participants in that you mentioned district health but really everyone in our community who are impacted by mental health which is everyone of course and really trying to come together to look at what we can do uh, to destigmatize, which is one of our goals this year. What can we do to really make sure that people know where to access mental health? How can we make it okay for people to talk about mental health? We had May, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. We did some really neat things across the community to let people know that there are mental health providers here if people need help. So what can we do as a community to really let people know that there are people here to make a difference, to get help, and that it's okay to reach out. If you're struggling, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to tell our listening audience that these ladies aren't rookies. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, Brenda, you, uh, excuse me, uh, Jennifer, would you please give us a little bit of your background? You bet. So, I, um, I'm a trained actually um, art therapist. That's what my master's degree is in. So I've been doing, well, I did therapy for several years before I became the executive director at Heartland Counseling. So I've been at Heartland in almost 12 years and you I absolutely when you were love, 20, right? right, I did. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, and I absolutely love my job. So I just have the best team and the best board of directors really. So I really love it. And it shows that you really enjoy what you're doing. Uh, just coming out, and not everybody's made for collaboration. You know, it's, you got you kind of yeah. have to. Learn, listening skills are really what makes collaboration works. Uh, what can you do to help share our common goal? Uh, Amy, would you want to add to that? Sure. Well, I do have to say, you know, I started my career at Boys and Girls Home, and Brenda was there. Okay. You know, <laughs> she started at 22. I was going to say she was a baby back then. 
Uh, but uh, then I was at uh, Rosecrans Jackson for about 20 years, and I've been with Catholic Charities about the last, uh, going on 10 years. Uh, I'm also, I am also started as a, um, I, I'm a licensed independent social worker now, and I'm just glad to be a part of this collaboration and, and you know, with Boys and Girls Home and, you know, Heartland in providing mental services here in the community because I think it's really demonstrated. And I think the roundtable is an example of that is that when we're all working together in providing the mental health services, that good things happen and it's better for our community that way. And I do think that we've really grown as a community in doing that. And I've really, you know, and having been here for a while, I think we're, we're much better at that. You know, I think that, you know, a long time ago that it was much more people were independent. It was maybe more territorial, but you really don't see that now. No, it's no. We're, we're working together and it's really neat to see. I want to thank both of you for leading that charge because that's what got us involved um, in sharing the information. Now, we're a little different um, because we have a residential facility, uh, but we still have out patient work with our family services. Brenda, do you want to describe some of, some of those uh, programs? So with our residential program, we treat children ages 6 to 18, and they come and stay with us, and they have severe uh, mental health, emotional needs, uh, have been traumatized, abused, neglected, or just struggling with their mental health. And they live with us for about six to nine months, and we get them stabilized and quite often go back home and work with their parents. But what I love about it, everything complements uh, each other and willing to share. And I learn a lot um, from Jennifer and Amy, uh, what they bring forward in the community. So I'm looking forward to this mental health uh, roundtable. I'm Art Silver along with Brenda Geisinger and Jennifer Jackson from Hotland Counseling and Amy Block from Catholic Charities. And you're listening to When Things Aren't Going Well. Let's continue our discussion on the mental health roundtable. Uh, so often uh, a person who knows they need help is reluctant to do that. Uh, Sometimes friends can help. Sometimes uh, other associate family can help. What would be your recommendation? If someone's out there thinking right now, man, I'd like to talk to somebody. I'm just kind of stuck. I want to touch into your, your therapy experience here. Jen, Amy. You know, I, I think that making the phone call most often is the hardest part. And, and I think that's why it's so important. And we all probably talk to our, our staff about whoever's on the other end to really understand that. Because I think that takes so much strength, but it really is just about making that first contact. And I think oftentimes that's where us as friends and family, as being that support person, encouraging them, letting them know it's okay. And I think that is where we've reduced, I think, a lot of that stigma uh, over time, and it's getting better that people know that it is okay to make that first contact, to reach out. But it really is just making that first call and knowing that people on the other end understand how hard it is and that they're going to be supportive. They're going to make it easy, that we all in this field understand that, and we're going to make it easy for you to hopefully walk through that door and um, that our environments are going to be safe and they're going to be welcoming and confidential wherever you go here in our community. Oh, that, that, that is so true. And there's so much help out there. I look at it like uh, if a person needs help, it's the old uh, cartoon when you cross the Nevada, California uh, state line. It's raining in Nevada, but the sun shines out in California. <laughs> and I, I think all these doors to all these agencies have that sunshine about it. Don't be afraid to go in. This is excellent help. Uh, and I don't see this a lot in communities. What's it like trying to get is it a, there's weight involved. What's the weight situation like in, in our community to get mental health services? Well, <clears throat> I think it de- really depends. It does depend on the agency. Actually, we are looking after the first of the year of doing open access. And so r- currently we have a walk-in clinic uh, four days a week. So if you're ever new, then that's the time you come. However, we want to even lessen that barrier. And so in January, we are going to an open access model. So that means if you want to come in for your first session, you just walk in. And so I think that will, and also think about 
how many times you are scared, like maybe you make that appointment and then and you back then, out. <laughs> exactly. And so where this is when you're ready, you show up and you're going to be seen. And so that's the model we're moving towards. So I'm really excited for the community for that. I think there are some wait lists um, when it comes to psychiatry. And so that's probably where we're going to see the most wait list, I would say. But as far as therapy, I think it's pretty easy in our community to to get in for a therapy appointment. Well, you're going to start that open access program, you said, in January. So everybody out there that you think you better go talk to somebody, give yourself a Christmas present and go in and just sit down when you're ready and talk with someone. It's, it's that easy. We're coming up on our break, so continue your early morning chill. We'll be right back with more When Things Aren't Going Well right here on 1360 AM, 90.9 FM, KSCJ. Let's face it, it happens to all of us. However, the pandemic has compounded all of our lives and activities. Even the simplest tasks seem harder. Hi, I'm Brenda Geisinger, the Chief Operating Officer at the Boys and Girls Home and Family Services. Family Services is a United Way partner agency serving children and families of our community, and we're here to help. If you'd like to learn more about Family Services, please contact us via email, website, Facebook, or phone Mary Pickens. At Family Services, we change lives. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well on KSCJ. Here's Art Silva. Welcome back to When Things Aren't Going Well. I'm Art Silva along with Brenda Geisinger and our guests Jennifer Jackson from Hotline Counseling and Amy Block from Catholic Charities. And we're discussing the Mental Health Roundtable. Okay, ladies, uh, I'm going to open it up to this. Uh, let's talk about how do you, what are the resources here? What can you look at, Amy? One of the really positive things that have come out of the mental health roundtable is the mental health directory. And this is a great resource for anyone in the community because oftentimes you, or maybe it's a family member or your child needs help. And you may be, be th- you might be thinking, well, I wonder if they accept my insurance or I wonder if they're available at 7 p.m. or maybe I need a 7 a.m. or maybe it's a weekend. Um, or maybe my child is struggling with its very specific issue. So this resource guide, which is located on Siouxland District Health Department's website, has a search engine that you can actually go in and type in your specific insurance. Let's say I have Aetna Insurance, and I have a, a daughter who I really want to make sure sees a female therapist because she's struggling with trauma, and I want a 5 p.m. appointment. And you can type those things in, and a list will pop up of therapists here in our community who would have that availability and accept that insurance and work with trauma. So it's a guide that we've had We've been in the process and it's being updated with our mental health professionals. It's probably been being worked on over the past couple months and it's really being fine-tuned now. So it is such a great resource for parents, individuals that I really encourage people to check out. That is so fantastic. Part of, one of the main problems with the mental health issue was access to care. Now, we've worked on that, but you've taken it such a complete different length that it answers all the questions that come up when you go to get access to care the insurance the hours the availability so this is a tremendous resource that you have there so amy how can somebody find that what what do they do Right. Well, it's on Siouxland District's Health Department website. We're also though really trying to make sure that physicians know about it, that school counselors know about it, in addition to all of us as providers, because oftentimes parents are first going to go to their physicians, people that they trust, or a school counselor. We really found that that research was showing when they were talking to kids in schools that a kid would say, you know, I'm worried about my friend or I'm having a problem, but they don't know where to go. So they're going to trusted adults, and we want to make sure those trusted adults know where to go and that they are able to find that information for people. You know, this whole field is changing, and I love the fact the way the two of you uh, uh, aggressively go after it to make it better. And then as soon as you get done making it better, you share it with everybody. And that's, that's just wonderful the collaboration uh when you look around at what's going with mental health there's so many changes uh 
Facebook is not a therapist, uh, but people fall in these little traps of thinking they're getting good advice. Uh, there's a new thing going on on both coasts, and I'm sure you're both aware about, where young people, uh, 30, 30 minutes for $30. It's a walk-in kind of deal where they do that, and you know, is that therapy? Uh, you're talking to someone, it might lead to therapy, but you know, but that is the way it's going nowadays. And uh, we, we've looked at that. We've seen a lot of people with that. we got people that we know that do this on the coast. There were plus and minuses to it. But um, it does. it is a starting point, at least a starting point that someone is willing to talk to someone. So, you know, when I, I read a statistic, 64% of uh, Americans are working depressives. Uh, they get through the day. What, what's the problem with finding a little sunshine? I know we've got a lot of issues out there but we all share those issues and no one's alone so um i think this mental health roundtable is going to be absolutely fantastic but uh we'll work on that and we'll talk about that in in future shows but first of all i want to i want to get back to your agencies and uh jennifer what's important now at hotland counseling counseling so a couple things um i just want to put a shout out to the life center it is our um, day program. It's for people just like you and I who may be struggling with anxiety or depression. It's free to the community. We're open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 3.30. You, we do three groups a day. You can have lunch, breakfast, coffee. Uh, you can bring your laundry. It's, we have, um, it's just a great place to make connections and friendships and whenever I do a tour there with somebody, the people that are there, the members always say that everybody there is like family to them. So it's just making those in-person connections is really critical. You know, it's uh, <laughs> when you get into situations like that, you make friends. Exactly. And it's a very lonely society. I think we, we, we deal in this loneliness quietly, but it's not good. So right. something like that is fantastic where they come out and maybe make one friend. Uh, and you said the family aspect. Yes. Uh, that is so important. Um, I know, Brenda, when we talk about our kids that have been with us for a while, um, we're their family. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. they, they, don't get some, they don't move on uh, either through a, a foster placement or whatever. They're part of our family. And they tell us that, Brenda. Yeah, I think it's really important for people to have ways to connect and places to meet that are safe. You're not necessarily having to go out at 10 o'clock and maybe to a bar right. or some place where you're the only one. You have to go somewhere where you feel comfortable. And like with our kids, they stay connected to our agency afterwards. We just had someone who was with our agency 20 years ago reconnect with us. So it's yeah. amazing. Thing. That was big. He felt very comfortable with that. Amy, what's important now at Catholic Charities? Before I share that, I also just want to say, you know, in regards to Jennifer's Life Center, it's also in this beautiful location. They have this new building, and it's just, it's so serene. It's has windows, and it's just in this wonderful location. So, okay. yeah, I'm absolutely. This yeah, you <laughs> should have some lunch art. It's just this beautiful space for them. But, uh, what's happening now? We are starting, it's actually starting tomorrow. We have a suicide support group starting. And it is a program that we've had. It's going on two years. It's a six-week series for anyone who's lost a loved one due to suicide. And it is, it's for adults, uh, 18 and up right now. It's a closed group. So the people you start with are the people you finish the, the program with. And unfortunately, it's been a, a much-needed program here in, in Sioux City as we see the numbers rise uh, of completed suicides here in our community. And we've had people go through multiple times, actually, because they've really seen the the benefit to them and have got something different out of it each time. It's, it's co-facilitated by our clinical director, Benita, and one of our other therapists, Nate, uh, which has also been a great benefit to have a couple different perspectives in there. It has some discussion, a little bit of education, and um, it, it's run from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And you can get more information on how to sign up. It's a free, it's a free program. You can uh, call our office or, or um, get information on our website for that. 
I can only imagine is um, it's there's no timetable for the healing that's mm-hmm. associated with a, a suicide uh, in the family and friends and those close. Uh, so that's wonderful, and certainly rich people to sign up and take advantage of that. Absolutely. Uh, you're coming up with some trivia deal, aren't you, Jennifer? You got something happening? Yes. So excited to see everybody on November 11th. Uh, which happens to be Veterans Day, and we're actually doing trivia night at the Legion Hall in South Sioux City. So we are sold out. Can't wait to see everybody and um, their outfits. We're doing the theme is scary movies. So I'm anxious to see everybody's costumes. (laughs) That sounds like a fun time. Amy, anything coming up with uh, Catholic Charities you want to give a plug for? No, we're just getting ready for the Christmas season with with our clients, and we have a... We have a little indoor uh, Christmas tree for them. And then we've got, uh, we're excited, Sacred Heart School always does some Thanksgiving baskets for for some of our clients. So we're really grateful to them. And I saw Mata Day is having a turkey dinner coming up. Uh, I'll be there. It's a, couple, it's a week early. And that's the easiest turkey dinner out of Mata Day is coming up, I think, next weekend maybe. So anyhow, we're coming up on the end of our show. And every uh, week we uh, try to end our show with a, a little joke. Uh, humor is medicine for the soul. So here we go. Keeping in the theme of mental health. My, ther- my therapist told me to find true inner peace. I should finish what I start. So far, I've finished two bags of M&M's, a chocolate cake, and I feel better already. (laughs) Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Brenda and Amy. And thank you to our listening audience. I want to give a shout out to Lloyd Nay, Travis Morgan, and the entire Musketeer staff for the annual Pink in the Rink in support of Breast Cancer Resource. Don't forget to visit the Stuff Thrift Teak located in the former Indian Hills Shopping Plaza, the new home of the Ginny Peterson Behavior Health Campus. Boys and Girls Home and Family Services hiring teachers and therapists. Call our HR manager at 293-4700. When things aren't going well, we'll return next Saturday morning right here on 1360 AM, 91.9 FM, KSCJ. Your homework this week is go out and have a good laugh. Be kind to your mind. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails. Happy trails to you till we meet again. For more information on the services provided by Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, see them online at boysandgirlshomeiowa.org. Or you can call 712-293-4700 to get more information about family services, residential treatment, the Opportunity School, the Siouxland Family Center, and more. At Boys and Girls Home and Family Services, we change lives. We change lives. We change lives.